Well, friends, we're at it again. We're going to speak about projection and accountability. I'm Janet Broadbent, and I'm with Marina, my buddy Marina, um, and she is mainly the one that has the <laughs> has the knowledge with these things. She's been um, working on this kind of healing and this kind of learning for five years, right, Marina? Oh no, well, that's just yeah. the core story. No, yeah. I've been doing this since 2006. I've been doing the relationship stuff since 2006. And then before that, I studied um, energy and intuition for a few years before, well, quite a few years since 2001. So I've been in a, I've been doing this stuff a long time, um, practicing the relationship skills that I, that I, we're talking about a lot for, since 2006. So however many years that is. Oh, and so I get to just ask her questions and she's just, she doesn't have any script to follow or anything, just kind of is from what she knows and experience. She has great experience in this area. Um, and this one is probably going to make me fidgety just because. Because <laughs> it's a big um, one. Yeah. A juicy one. <laughs> yeah. Very juicy. Very exciting to talk about it because it is very, it applies to every one of us humans, I believe, how we project and how good it feels to take accountability after you find yourself projecting mm -hmm. with your significant other or your children or neighbors. And how magical anybody. it is to take accountability. Yeah. It's actually magical. It's not even just a good idea. It's magical. It changes everything, but we'll get there. We'll get. There. Okay. Let's let, what is projection? <laughs> let's what talk about projection? projection first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What does it even mean? What does projection even mean? So usually mm -hmm. when I start talking about projection, I like to give the analogy of the mirror, right? So everything okay. outside of us is a mirror for what is going on inside of us. And if we can look at life this way, we'll save ourselves so much headache. And at first it's like, ouch, 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 right? Because you're going, that thing that I really don't like about that person, right? Oh, I got it too, right? And, and so mm -hmm. that can be a little bit owie for people. But if we can take a look at everything outside of us as a mirror reflection for something that is going on inside of us. So a lot of people, when I first learned proje about projection, the way it was presented to me was way different than the, what I learned that it actually is. Okay. So the way that it was presented was, is that if I'm seeing somebody doing something, let's say somebody who's two faced, Okay, somebody who presents themselves one way to me and then presents themselves another way to somebody else, right? And, and I call that two-faced. So if I notice somebody's doing that and it really bugs me, that means I'm also doing that to somebody. But I found that that wasn't true. I'm not necessarily, like that was one that I actually have dealt with through my life is people being two-faced. What I finally realized was is that projection, why it bugged me so bad is because I was doing it in here. Ah, I was doing it to me. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> right? That's very deep, so, yeah. So I might be doing it to other people, but where mm. I was doing it was with me. So, so I've kind of changed this for myself in the way that I teach it is that everything outside of you is a mirror of something that's going on in here. So explain how you were doing it to yourself. Um... I would show up with somebody and I would say, yes, this is how I really feel. This is what I want. Right. But I was doing it to save the peace with that person, not because that was what was authentic for me. So then oh. I'm being two faced to myself. I'm not being authentic mm -hmm. in all moments with myself, which, yeah, that could be that I'm showing up with this person differently than I'm showing up with this person. Right. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't solve the problem to try to change it out there to try to to make sure that I'm always doing it for the other person where where the change was was when I actually went oh I'm being two-faced and I'm doing this to myself I am not honoring and being authentic to me and that's where the damage is that's in the relationship right it damages this relationship first always 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 it damages this relationship at first before it damages those so you look pretty deep when you see something. I mean, for instance, if you see um, two different entities at war with each other and you're like, there's no way that I'm reflecting something, um, but 
there really can be. You can be at war with yourself in your head yes. about things. Yes. Right? Okay. So for example, like killing. I'm not okay. out killing people, right? Yeah. And yet yeah. I have quite this like, you know what I mean? A judgment or um, a resistance to people who are out killing other people, right? Yeah. Um, and yet, and, and it's like this, ah, don't do that. But how is it that I'm killing different aspects of myself off? that aren't healthy am i killing my voice right am mm -hmm. i killing the truth of of who i am am i killing the energy within my own body because i'm putting toxic chemicals in it like there's a million different ways that i might be killing myself and what's going on inside of me right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we can take it to even to simpler things like I have a lot of plants in my home mm -hmm. and I've noticed this over the years because I've dealt with a lot of health issues. When my health is low, so are it's my plants. My plants health is low. And mm -hmm. it, I've looked at this and I'm like, wow, my plants are mirroring to me what's going on. And we could get into the energy of all this, right? Like mm -hmm. it's literally all frequency. Like what we right. put out is what we see and it's what we call back and it's it's all that kind of stuff that energetically there's a reason for all of this there's a reason energetically um why everything outside of us is a mirror going on inside of us you know what i mean but then we get into a lot of science that i don't really understand <laughs> yeah <laughs> enough yeah. we understand it enough to to understand it myself but i don't understand it enough to share the science behind it but there i is just know that we were designed in such a magical magnificent way like our design yeah our human design, the fact that we can walk out on the grass barefoot and and get and and have an energy surge and a healing properties by just doing that. I know. I mean There's that's so, so simple. Much. Connecting with the earth is just a huge deal. And so the energy, I I believe there is something huge with the energy and the design. Um, but let's just take it even way simpler, way, way, way simpler. If you if you say, you know, you have a roof that's leaking and so you're looking into what kinds of roofs do you want to put on your house and you notice when you drive through the neighborhood, you notice all the roofs, right? Because you need a roof on your house. And so I think even just that simple, mm -hmm. like what you, what calls to you is what, what is here. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, if you notice unhappy women everywhere you go, maybe it's calling to you your unhappy parts, right? Yeah. Yes. Your your unhappiness or whatever. So there's so a I message. Think just a yeah, there's a message in absolutely everything that surrounds us. A message. If we want to take it that far, there's a message mm. for us, right? And it might be what we're projecting onto the thing. But it can still be yeah. that what we're projecting onto it can be a message for us. Because ultimately we we know what we need to be doing. Even if we don't know here, we know what we need to be doing that yeah. bless our lives in the best way possible. Okay, so I'm going to throw this out there. What if my grandchild is throwing a massive fit on the kitchen floor? What does that have to do? I mean, is that a mirror when I notice that? Well, I, I would say yes, because everything's a mirror, right? Okay. Um, okay. But what it's telling you might be different for one person than another. So yeah. for somebody who really holds it all together, they may need to throw a freaking fit. They may need to <laughs> like loose. loosen up a little bit, right? Express themselves. Express themselves <laughs> a little bit. Or it might be that what they get to learn is how to listen to their child, right? Oh, I'm not listening. That's a message for me. So I would say everybody's message is going to be a little different. So okay. tune in and ask, what is this trying to get me to learn? What is this teaching me? So oh, when, when I, I find when I give my grandchildren, because my kids are raised and gone, but when I give them space to express what their emotions are, it literally heals something in me. Like, is it the little kid in me? I don't know, but it literally just softens my heart too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it might be that the, the person whose kid it is, or the person standing there watching it, doesn't allow themselves their own emotional they they're not yeah. present with their own emotions or they're not you know what I mean not allowing themselves to really feel deeply and that's why it triggers you when your kid feels deeply or you know, and there's so many reasons yeah yeah true yeah. I love it I love the projection 
Yeah. So there's also like, like when I first started teaching this, I had, I had a handful of people that were like really resisting it. And because they started to um, think about projection as only negative. Like it's always just showing me all the bad stuff I'm doing, but that's not true. A reflection is showing you what's going on inside. So if, if you are loving yourself, if you're taking care of yourself, if you're nurturing yourself, if you're feeling your emotions, if you're giving yourself space, if you're doing all those things for yourself, that's also going to be reflected. So, you know what I mean? Every time we walk out and we look at the beautiful nature and it's just like, oh, this is so amazing. That's also a reflection of you. Hmm. right it's not yeah. all negative yeah also you know giving genuine appreciation is a reflection you know yes, that's, huh, yes. That's and it can actually enhance our whole experience of everything when we're appreciating these things because i mean where does it end like i don't even know how i'm trying to say this it's like if we're all connected to everything and we walk outside and we give that tree appreciation are we given the tree appreciation? Or are we given our self appreciation? Is the tree giving us appreciation? Like we're all so connected that who knows what's really going on, right? I, I think it's a lot greater than we could even know. Well, maybe we could know it, but greater than we currently pops probably know, <laughs> right? Right. right. Wow. Yeah. So reflect or projection is not just the negative stuff and the stuff you're judging right about somebody else it's right it's just everything where it gets into what i would say very damaging for relationships is when you project your own stuff your own insecurities your own judgments your own belief systems when you project that onto another person and start blaming them that's when i would say that projection is damaging right like that's how it's typically used the word projection is typically used like you're projecting everything Right. And so in relationship that I want, I like to make that clarification. It's like, there's this reflection of the mirror, right? You, you get everything reflected back to you about what's going on here. But then if you notice what's going on here and you project it, that's where it's damaging. Okay. When you okay. start going, well, my husband is good for nothing because yeah. he talks bad to me. Yeah. Well, you could look at that and go, oh, my husband's talking bad to me because who's talking bad to me? Me. Right? Like the projection is, what's true is, is that I'm talking bad to me. And then because I'm talking bad to me, uh, I'm having that reflected in my husband talking bad to me. And then I'm blaming him for it. Wow. So it could just be a ricochet, a constant figure eight type of thing back and it forth. Could. In an, in an unhealthy way, it could be back yeah. and forth, right? The only reason your husband might be talking bad to you is because he's talking bad to himself. Right. How do you distinguish or do you not worry about untangling who started that <laughs> projection, but you just get straight with yourself and then everything yes, kind of just... to a degree. I never will encourage somebody to support staying in a in a really abusive situation, right? Like... I, I'm not a support for abuse. If you're in an abusive situation, get out. Okay. Love yourself enough to remove yourself from the situation so that you're not getting beat up, right? Verbally or physically, yeah. Mostly physically, yes, verbally too. But but the verbally goes so into what I'm doing to myself that I suggest if if your partner's verbally abusing you, take a look at yourself and how much you're verbally abusing yourself first right okay mm -hmm. because it could be that you're just perceiving them abusing you because that's the reflection what if they're mm -hmm. actually not abusing you and you can't see it any different because you're abusing you wow because your your mirror is you're so abusive to yourself your words your talk your self-talk mm -hmm. that you just reflect that to everybody around you Yes. And so you might be hearing everybody telling you what a rotten, horrible person you are because it's trying, the mirror's trying so hard to get you to get, yeah. you're being horrible to yourself. Stop it. Yeah. Right. So that is such a good point. I, I know that so many times I'll have somebody telling me people think this and this about me and I'll say, people, what person thinks that and that about you? 
you know, is that true? Can you for sure tell me which person? And it all boils down to the voice in their head sometimes. Not all, not all. I shouldn't say it all. But often it boils down to the voice in their head, which is themselves. Yep. It's themselves and their own judgments on themselves. Instead of saying, I have this story about myself and it's this, they say, people, people are judging me because of this and this. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and then people's judgments are really about themselves, not even you. Right. If they truly were, if, if the person could say, yeah, so-and-so said to me or whatever, you're, you're doing that. You're a bad person, this and this. It is truly about them, not you. It is. And it could be about you too. But the person okay. saying it, it's about them. The only reason okay. they're seeing, let me say this a little differently. You can see something in the mirror and it might be the truth, but it won't necessarily trigger you unless it's yours. Right. Okay. okay. If it sticks, if it triggers, if it hurts, yeah. if it whatever, you've got it going on inside. Okay. Okay. So triggers, I love it when people are triggered because they can dig down and go, okay, I think it's coming from my core story or this and right. that and the other. So good point. So if you just acknowledge, oh, this person, this and this and this, that's different than being triggered. Yes. So, huh. so if I see someone that is, let's, I'll, I'll use one that a lot of us have a, a something around. Okay. And that is fat or skinny. If mm -hmm. I see somebody fat and they're maybe eating something, some kind of a food that I judge, right? As being bad, mm -hmm. makes you fat, right? Then I might look at them and go, ah, right? There's a there's something that triggers in me and it might go, ah, that person shouldn't be eating that because that's making them fat. Or that person should be exercising, right? To right. drop some weight. Right. Um, and that's a reflection of how I'm holding myself to a standard, right? I can only eat certain foods or I will be fat, right? And fat is bad because of blah, blah, blah. It's all my own stuff on it. We yeah. have no idea if that person over there that is fat is fat because they have a, a thyroid problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know. Maybe they're carrying something for the whole world that we are unaware of. Yeah. Like we have no idea where that person's fat, but we project our own stuff on it. Okay. But let's say, let's say we might be a little bit overweight, but we've loved our body and we're very okay with it in our body, right? Of being mm -hmm. whatever size that, that we are. And then we see somebody who's heavy. We might be more curious about it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I wonder what's going on for that person. Are they okay with their body? right? Are they not okay yeah. with their body? Then yeah. it's still a reflection of what's going on inside of us because right. we don't know what's going on for that person. It's still a reflection. It's just that the reflection's not going to hurt because we don't have a trigger around it. So it's almost like the more compassion we have for ourselves and the more healing we do for ourselves, we have that kind of same, maybe a curiosity, but not a judgment with yes. different things. Yes. Okay. So so, you know, Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like you could take it and use that in this sense of the word, like judge not because when you're judging, who are you judging? It's you. all your own stuff. Right? Yeah. But how can you just stop judging? Can we really just stop judging? Yeah. That's another just a control mechanism. That's just trying to go, oh, I better not judge. I better not judge. And then you're judging yourself for judging. Which yeah. is <laughs> And it's, it's like this never ending circle that doesn't work. Right. So you can't just stop yourself from judging, but you can sure love yourself and you can sure heal all your stuff. And then there's less judgment. Yeah. Like, I've never met a human being that doesn't judge. So I don't know if you ever get there. Right. Yeah. Right. I just right. wonder if we become more accepting of it all accepting like the more we heal the more we recognize yeah we're human we judge oh whatever yeah, yeah. it's a part of it you know what i'm saying so i i see where you're coming from i see that and i i also the more i learn the more i just notice things but i don't feel like i have a 
a negative story as much. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I still do off and on. I'll go, oh my gosh, I've got something going on there because that really triggered me or that really brought up some negativity. But yeah, noticing something, I, I think that we're all humans and we all look for the, the different things in yeah. ourselves, mm -hmm. in each other. And this like, is really kind of a good thing. thing. This is really yeah, a good yeah. thing because you can take your judgments and learn about yourself yes. from those judgments. Or, or even projections. We can learn about ourselves more by watching our projections. Which I think is kind of the same thing, right? Judgment. Judgment. Wouldn't that judgment be a projection? Yep. Yep. That is so true. Good point. Very good. I mean, when you're judging or projecting, it almost, I think in my mind, almost like you're puking. <laughs> That's such a great, great visual <laughs> because energetically, that's actually what we are doing is oh. we're puking our insides onto yeah. somebody else. <laughs> and, and then, and then looking through it and going, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then we wonder why we, we have such challenging relationships. I know. So yeah, we're puking all over each other. I, <laughs> I love that analogy for it, Janet. <laughs> oh my gosh relationships they just really I mean but we're always going to be in relationships so why not learn about our relationships with ourselves we're always going to be in a relationship with ourselves right 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 and, and with other people around us I mean even if if we each had our own island we're still in a relationship right and we're yes. in a relationship with nature and we're in a relationship with whatever our surroundings so we're in a relationship with money. We're in a relationship with God. We're in a relationship with our bodies. We're in a relationship with our children. We're in a relationship with the weather. I mean, we're in a relationship that everything is a relationship. So oh, if we're projecting, we're made, who are we making miserable? Right. Yeah. Right? Ourselves. Ourselves. Every time we project, we, we add to the misery. But then if we can turn around and look at that and go, what is this? What is this telling me about me? And the challenge that, that I've run into with people having is, is they don't want to look at themselves. They don't want to feel that sting, right? Of like, oh, I do it too. And why do yeah. they have such a hard time feeling that? Is because it triggers their core story. Right. 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 It triggers their core story. So if we can start to really look at things and face into that and recognize this story isn't even true that I'm believing, yeah. right? It's going to make looking at things a thousand times easier because yeah, I might feel this owie, but that doesn't mean that what I'm believing about the owie is true. It doesn't mean I'm a rotten person. It doesn't mean I'm not good enough. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with me. Yeah, no. And yet we connect the two. That's why we don't want to take accountability oftentimes is because we connect the two. It's like, oh, if I am two-faced, uh, yeah. Uh, then that means there's something wrong with me. We right. don't logically think this, but this is what's going subconscious, happening subconsciously. So is it's it, a mechanism to not want to face it. Yes. That's a mechanism that all humans do is we project until we don't, right? We project so that we don't have right. to face the feelings around the core story that we have going on that says there's something wrong with me. Mm. And so, so we're we really talking, project. we're really talking accountability at this point. And so starting to go, get into the accountability, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I would say the first step of accountability is being willing to look at your own stuff yeah. gently, like kindly look at kindly. Thank you. Yeah. Kindly take a look at your stuff kindly um, because you have a relationship with yourself too. Right. And you can project all over yourself too. And you can uh, blame yourself and judge yourself and, and make it really hard to have a relationship with yourself too. So accountability is looking at it honestly from kindness, with kindness. So knowing that, when when I have a friend that, that says, hey, do you want some feedback? And I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with be, having feedback from somebody or, or you know, some sort of um, even being reprimanded or being corrected if I know that it's going to be done with kindness. And I kind of think that's, you know, same with myself. If if I can look at something I'm doing that is not productive with uh, a deeper connection in my relationships 
or with myself, I, I'm way more likely to look at that and look at my core story if I'm kind and yeah. have a little bit of compassion for myself. And it makes it not so scary to face into what you get to face into as you learn. Yeah, it's like you build a trust with yourself. Yeah. You know that you're yeah. going to treat yourself kindly so that anytime you have to go and look at something scary, you're not being forced to do that without the support of yourself, without the kindness of yourself, without the love of yourself. I see it oftentimes as, and I think this this may help some people to look at it this way, because I know, I know it helps me, is to look at it as, as the child, the child aspect of me, right? And the mother as aspect of me, or the parent or the adult, right? And it's like the adult can be really hard on the child and, and the child is the one that has all the deep feelings and it has the spunky personality and it's like the free spirit, right? And so anytime we're trying to like, you need to do it this way, we're being more of the parent to the child and it's harsh. But if we're kind to that child, right? And, and it helps seeing it as a child because first off, we all have that aspect of ourself, right? And secondly, is we all have softer hearts for children. Well, yeah. a bunch of us do, right? And so if right. we can look at ourselves, like, yeah, I've got this little child in me too. And, and I'm being really hard on her. Yeah. Would I do that with a child just, you know, in my, in my home or in their home? Would and I treat them that rough? We probably do because that is how we're treating our own inner child. Yeah. right we do that not oh. because we want to treat our physical yeah, child whatever but it's because yeah. we're doing it to ourselves. you know that is the message that I am learning that's the piece I'm learning so much right now is is the times that I parented harshly were the times that I was being so harsh to myself yeah me too yeah so it's like wow yep. um I definitely see I definitely see how that gets get you when you're being rough with somebody around you it's because you're it's right here it's inside yeah so here's here's a quote that i i saw from you but i don't know if it's your quote it says if honesty creates closeness this massive lie creates disconnect mm -hmm. this projection lie yeah, will we'll cause more disconnect yeah that is for me that's just been my experience yeah yeah, yeah. i love that I mean, it's just so, so obvious too. It's just, this is the opposite of what you want for closeness. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that the Hendrix, Hendrix Institute, when I studied with them, they would say all the time is honesty is the best aphrodisiac. Yeah. Okay. Now that's if you're in a, a romantic relationship, but if you're in a relationship with a child or a parent or, you know, a friend, you don't want that to be an aphrodisiac. What basically I think they're saying is it creates closeness. Honesty yeah. creates connection. It creates closeness. It creates safety. It creates truth, right? Oh. It creates yeah. that. So if that's what that creates, then wouldn't a lie create the opposite? Yeah, wouldn't true. Wouldn't holding create the opposite? Wouldn't projection create the opposite? Mm -hmm. right? That's right. But you're not being honest. You're not being honest. You're literally... Like, so, so this takes us really well into accountability because what is accountability? It's being honest yeah. with ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's being honest with what's really going on. And what's really going on is I'm projecting all over you, my own crap. Yeah. What's really yeah. going on inside of me. So if I'm honest, I'll take a look at what is going on inside of me. Oh, I'm being, beating myself up. Oh, yeah. I'm being being hard on myself I'm being two-faced I'm being this is what's going on inside of me so true so true yeah and then taking accountability in a relationship can look like you owning up to that yeah. and you go and oh I'm projecting this on you but what's really going on is I'm doing this with myself yeah you know what so I'm sorry I did this to you I'm doing this to my, I've been doing this to myself and I'm not going to, I'm going to do what I can to change that here. So it could look like an apology to your loved ones. It could look like an apology to yourself too, but. It could, it totally know. could. Probably that's probably the best way to do it. It's just like, Hey, you know, <laughs> I didn't know any better. Sorry. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm learning. Parties. silly. I'm a human, but I am. So defiancy is the opposite of accountability, mm. right? So. 
it feels like to me if somebody was was projecting um and they weren't willing to take accountability they'd be very defiant right they could, they like, could also be very it's silent. Your part. yeah true there's a lot of different things but defiancy uh definitely is a big one i see yeah, that a yeah. lot in relationships defiant self-righteous that's not yes yeah, self-righteous that's not what yeah. i do that's what you do <laughs> yeah you're the one that blah, blah, you know so could you say projection could be part of the drama triangle? And I know people that haven't watched any of our videos might be, oh, what's the drama triangle? But um, for the ones that are following us and watching the videos, it feels like that the projection just locks up your relationship and puts you in the drama triangle. Mm -hmm. Whereas yes. accountability can put you back in the ease and flow. Absolutely. So for people that we, because we haven't done a video on the drama triangle yet, that's got to be our oh, next one, Janet. We better do it. We better do <laughs> we it. We need to do it and put it first because <laughs> it is so foundational. But yeah. anyway, but people who haven't seen that understand what drama is, right? And uh, let's just do a little brief synopsis. So drama basically has only three, three positions in drama. You either got to be a victim, you got to be a hero, or you got to be a, a villain. Those are the three aspects of drama. And so if you are projecting, you're probably in the villain role, right? If you're defiant or you could be victim too, if you're, yeah. if you're, yeah, because you can be um, projecting like, you're always so mean to me, right? Wow, wow, wow. Right. Woe is me kind of an energy going on and that's more victim. So you can be victim if you're projecting you can be villain if you're projecting like no that's your fault you shouldn't have done it that way right and you can be doing that with yourself or with somebody outside of you or with life or money or whatever you got going on right okay. um and then you can also um i will save the day because you can't do it i'll right? do it i'll or do you. it because i'm the strong one and that's also yeah. projecting right you're projecting right. the fact that that you're perceiving them as wimpy as weak and not being able to to do these things themselves right so all three of them create drama and when we're in drama we do not have access to aliveness we don't have access to aliveness all we can have is access to drama so so when you take accountability when you go oh okay i'm blaming you i'm projecting all my crap onto you or i'm projecting on you because most people won't know that it's theirs yet right? I'm projecting on you and I'm blaming you. Then if you pause and you go, okay, how is it that I'm doing this myself to myself, most likely, and then yeah. the world secondary, right? Then you can look and you go, oh, okay, this is how I'm doing it. This is how I'm doing it. This is how I'm doing it. And then if you were to go, oh, okay, I was just blaming you. This is my stuff. I can't even yeah. see the truth of what you're doing because this is my stuff that I'm seeing. And projecting it all onto you i'm going to go take care of it within myself yeah. that could dynamically change the entire relationship right absolutely because then you're you're pulling yourself back into ease and flow um you know i was going to ask you i kind of think we're at that point where i could ask you some wonder questions that would kind of pull you out of that drama triangle you know maybe i guess it depends on the situation but I wonder how fast I could read yeah. through there. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that would be a good time to ask yourself some wonder questions. Yeah, like, oh, how, how simple and easy could it be to actually look at my stuff? Ooh. How magical could it be to be honest with myself? Yeah, yeah. How beautifully could I, could I take ownership here of my own crap that's going on? How right? tender so would it be that? to look within, yeah. you know, how... How care how 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 caring would it be or how um, nurturing would it be to just go spend some quiet time and breathe through this one and look within? Uh, you know, love it. Yeah, cool. I love it, love it. Yeah, I don't know that there's ever a situation where questions couldn't be used and blessed. Yeah. They're so magical. They They're so, so magical. magical. Yeah, they are amazing. So the, like, do, yeah, doing questions at this point is really fabulous mm -hmm. to help you to stay in a place of kindness to yourself, kindness to the other person, right? And and who are you blessing when you take accountability and are kind? You know what I mean? Like you're blessing, of course, the whole relationship. 
but you're not suffering either, right? Like you're really blessing yourself to have better relationships so you can enjoy them. <laughs> and yes, you're blessing other people when you do that. Absolutely. It's almost like, you know, you're walking around with dirty glasses on or something and everything looks dismal and, and shabby and, and, you know, you're, you're going, man, I, I think everybody needs to clean up their act or whatever. <laughs> you, you go in and look and take your glasses off for a minute and go, oh my gosh, everything is beautiful and clean and wonderful. And, <laughs> and all. That's probably a, a silly analogy, but I do no, believe I love it. Kind of see things through our own filters and our own messiness that's going on inside. Yeah, we definitely do. And if we can clean up those filters, if we can really yeah. be honest with ourselves and take a look at that and then literally do the liberation formula with it, right? Like that's really all we need to do is to be present with it, be real with ourselves, right? Honest, and then be present with it and feel the emotion and recognize the that it's leading to the story that isn't even true. And we give ourselves love. That's how we heal it. It's, it's that simple. And then once we can heal it, and you know this because you've been experiencing it, but the, the deeper we heal it, the more free we are and the less we're triggered by people's comments or responses or reactions or verbiage or, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Oh, wow. So you're so right. The, the more you learn and the more you go within and breathe through those different emotions that you're having, the less triggering people are to you. You know, I, I used to, there's an, there's an example I wanted to use of, I used to get really triggered when people would show up late to something I'm doing. Like, it just felt like they were being so inconsiderate uh -huh. and so disruptive and so whatever, you know, make it a priority. But I kind of have this, this feeling now and this, this sense of, you know what, it's all perfect timing. They'll come and go. They'll get what they need. Yeah, you know, maybe they didn't hear all that you had to say, but maybe they didn't need to hear all that you had mm. to say. Yeah, so what it sounds like is you've done some healing work around this. <laughs> okay, but say say I start criticizing that or 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 like projecting on somebody about showing up late. What does that tell me? Just like I haven't been respectful of myself? Potentially, and, and, it depends on your judgment, right? So yeah. if you judge them being late as disrespectful, yeah, there's ways you're disrespecting yourself and that's why you're judging it so harsh. Or you have massive judgment on it because somebody who's disrespectful triggers your core story. Okay, say that again. Okay. Yeah. So it could be that the mirror is showing you that you are being disrespectful to yourself, which is probably 99.9% .9 of the time, okay? Okay. Okay. And, or it could be triggering your core story. Okay. And how that might look is like, oh, sure. say your core story is I'm not enough. Yeah. Okay. I'm not yeah. enough. So I have, in order to be enough, I have to make sure I'm on time. So then when somebody's not on time and you go, well, that was disrespectful. What's really being triggered is you're thinking that they're now not enough because that's the story it triggers in you is not enough or here's another way to look at it marina or i'm not enough or they would show up on time okay so go into this one a little bit more with me so so if i was the teacher mm -hmm. and and the person showed up late um maybe it does trigger my core story of i'm not enough yes 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 i'm seeing it now you know i mean there's yes. so many if I was doing it perfect enough, then I would create the type of yeah. a class that everybody would want to show up on time for and yeah. get everything. So now I must not be enough. I'm a mess. Yeah. I'm a mess. Something's wrong with me. So we'd like to make it about ourselves. When it's reaching our core story, I feel like we try to make it about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> We're still doing that. Like children do that, right? Yeah. They take yeah. everything and make it all about them. And when we get stuck in the core story, we're doing the same thing. That's all we're doing. Well, that kind of is stuck in as a child. That's kind of a child thing anyway. When you're stuck in the core story, aren't you kind of, didn't you kind of create the core story when you were young and mm -hmm. didn't quite know what to do with some of the things that, that you did or didn't have control over? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's when I created my core story, I was, I was quite young. Yeah, me too. I've wondered, I've had this wondering. So 
um, how do I say it? It's like, is that child aspect of me never, a, has it never been able to grow up because I have been believing this lie from the time I was that small? I don't know. This is just a thought that I've had in my head. Like, am I stuck there because I've never been able to mature in that area because no. I've never seen the truth in that? Like, you know what I mean? I've had questions like that and I don't know. I don't know one way or the other at this point, but it's been a question. Well, I think that's a wonderful question because what came to me when you were asking, you know, when you asked that question or when you were talking about this question you've had in your mind is don't you feel when you address your core stories and your projections and, and you take accountability, don't you? And I don't want this to sound odd, but don't you feel wiser? Mm -hmm. I mean, I do. I look at yeah, things as, like more emotionally mature. Yes. Yeah. So I do think that we get hung up as a little child sometimes, even as 54 year old women can act so childish. And I think it's, I think we do get hung up on our core story, which happened when we were younger, usually. And we don't work beyond that unless emotionally we can work beyond that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's been so, my experience. And I don't, you know what I mean? I don't have enough experience yet to know if it's really true for wow, everybody. That's an interesting thing to wonder. Yeah, I, I, I think where this came from was, is I had a friend at one point talking with me about her husband who had been addicted to alcohol and she was getting some support and he was getting support. And once he kicked his alcohol addiction, he, she said he matured in ways that she had never seen before. And that the therapist mm -hmm. had told her something to this effect, because I don't, I'm, I don't remember it fully and I was getting it secondhand was that um, in our brains, the moment we take on uh, the addiction, whatever it is, we stop developing in a certain area. Wow. And so then when we break that addiction, then we're able to mature in that area. And so then oh. it's like, well, my experience with, with helping people with addictions and my own addictions is, is that there's some emotional thing going on underneath the surface yeah. right I have always felt that way about addictions like there is something unhealed that we're that's not wanting to is. face yes. some aspect that we're not wanting to face that's, wow. that's causing us to try to do something to cover it up right and wow. so we take on this addiction to cover up some feeling we're not willing to face and right. so I wouldn't be surprised I, I can't say this is true but I wouldn't be surprised if emotionally we stunt our our emotional development when we are addicted to something including am i addicted to my own core story am i yeah. addicted to feeling to to believing i'm not yes. good enough or yeah. addicted to believing that there's something wrong with me right wow. so that we're we're stunting our, our our emotional development that's that's a story <laughs> Don't Dang, know, true, but that. it's something I'm experimenting with and playing with myself. And this is all this is, is, is we're learning and growing as we heal ourselves. We're not going to heal anybody around us. We're only going to heal ourselves and we're learning. Right. We're kind of a, we're kind of just a experiment really. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's wonderful. And when you were talking just now, um, I remember when I, I felt like I was addicted to alcohol at one point in my life. I know my, the class that I'm teaching right now or facilitating, they're teaching me, but I know when they watch this, they're going to go, what? Cause it doesn't sound like me to be into alcohol, but I was, I was big time into it. And I believe when you were talking, it just dawned on me. I missed when I quit drinking, I missed being childlike. And, and let me tell you how I, I was when I was drinking. This is how I perceived it. This is my story that I was able to just love and kiss on people and just oh. like, just tell them, you mean the world to me. Like I was able to express my love and physically hug and kiss people and just laugh and giggle till I peed my pants. Right. <laughs> and now, now I've been able to just be childlike without that. And I do think that I was stuck in a certain uh, certain age. It was a wonderful age. And, it, and uh, to me, it was kind of almost worth being an alcoholic in a sense. But, 
but I get to still be um, vulnerable and loving and and kiss on people when I feel like it, even when I haven't had a drop of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there you was know? probably a bunch of healing that you had to do in order to get to that point. And a lot um, of looking at what's going on inside of me, right? Before you could get to that point. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I look at addictions a lot more tenderhearted than I ever did. Me too. Because, <laughs> yeah. I just... I don't have a huge judgment on it. So, yeah. And we all have addictions. You know, right. a big one, a big one right. that I'm dealing with currently and have been dealing with it for years is food. Yeah. Same thing. I catch myself wanting to eat when I'm when I'm having a feeling that I'm not willing to feel all the way through, you know? And sometimes that's a good feeling. Sometimes it'll be that I'm on a high and I'm like, "Oh, great. Now what can I go eat?" Right? Yeah. Now, why can't you just sit with this amazing feeling inside of your body without having to stuff food in to bring yourself back down? I'm with you, girl. You, you know? figure that out, you <laughs> will just rock the world. Well, I'm still in process of working on on getting it. And that's the biggest thing is is just being present with the emotion. And taking accountability one step at a time. Yeah. Right? Yes. Because it's gonna come up often. We get to take accountability all day. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. If we're willing, if we're willing to look at ourselves honestly and take accountability with kindness, then yeah, yeah. all day long, every single day, we it's an opportunity to learn something about ourselves and grow and to, to face into those deep places that will ultimately free us. So who's going to benefit, you know, me oh. and everybody around me, because <laughs> I'll stop oh, projecting yeah. my shit onto them. That's right. That's <laughs> right. When, when I, I'm trying to br break a habit of things like projection, if I can think of what it's going to feel like to let go of it, mm. be accountable, then I can do it better. If yes. I can think about how freeing that's going to be, I <laughs> work, I'll work for it way more than if I just go, oh, I've got to quit doing that. Yes. You know? Yes. I love that <laughs> because it is freeing. So, so when a first person is just for starting, they may not have that, um, background or that um what's i'm looking anchor point um that's still not what i'm looking for that experience they will have never had that experience of knowing how free it is to take accountability from a kind place to yourself and actually walk themselves through and heal right but hmm. if they can act in faith first right like yeah. well janet and Myrna said it's it's gonna be <laughs> freeing right so keep practicing keep practicing keep practicing and and you'll have this you'll have a moment where you go <gasps> Oh, this is what they were talking about. It is yeah. more free. Look at what happened in my relationship. I didn't get into that great big fight. I actually had some success in my relationship because I wasn't projecting all over my spouse, right? And then you get to feel, oh my goodness, I did that with kindness too. So now I'm I'm even in a better relationship with myself and I'm not being my, it's so freeing. I wish I could just like <laughs> let, give everybody the feeling because then they do it so much more. Yeah, man, if you screw up and you do project on your people, you will have another chance and you screw up and you do it, you know, you project, you'll have a chance again to do it right. And it will feel so good. You'll have that split second to before you react that you can think about it and go oh here's that moment that I get to go within and I get to check and see what's going on inside before I puke it out yep. yep another really fabulous way to get yourself to to learn this is to one time take owner of ownership of it verbally with whoever it is right so if it's yeah. your spouse or your kid right and you go to them and you go you know what I just projected all my crap on top of you. It wasn't even true. I don't even know what's true with you because all I'm seeing is my own stuff. So I'm sorry. I'm going to do better at not doing that. I guarantee the next time you go to do it, you're going to remember a lot sooner because yeah. that is vulnerable. And that is yeah. so challenging at times to yeah. own up to our stuff that big, right? But then the oh, next time you're going to be like, oh, I got to be on guard because I don't want to have to go do that again. That was so vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, so uncomfortable. Yeah, so I agree. uncomfortable, right? <laughs> Eventually, it gets to where it's not uncomfortable. 
But when you're first starting, that's uncomfortable. Eventually you, you have healed enough that you go, oh my goodness, I just caught myself projecting on you. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't sting so bad. Yeah, man. I've learned so much watching you do that when you were teaching our class um, and we had the chat group going on and you would, you would make a mistake, you'd project or you would, you would make a call and you would admit it right then. And I thought, man, I can learn so much faster from somebody that, that I know is still in the process, like, and, and taking accountability, like it gives everybody permission to take accountability when you do. Not, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. And that, it wasn't like actually, you were, I'm actually doing that for myself. And I'm so glad that it blesses other people because yeah. I don't want to live in it for any longer than I have to, because it's not fun. Right. And so it's just it's faster. It's just easier to just own it right away, say it, yep. and then I'm done. And then I'm free yep. again. <laughs> so I'm really glad point. that it blessed you guys as well. Yeah, super awesome. I love learning these things, Marina. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's Me wonderful. Too. I keep freeing myself more and more and more and more and more, and it's just delicious. And so now I want help to support other people to free themselves. Right. And when we were done with our class and we're like, what can we do? I mean, this is such a neat gift when you taught us. And I remember you saying, just go out and just just ripple that out to, to everybody around us. And that is the best way to to get it deeper mm -hmm. is to teach it, is to share it with people. Yeah. And it's like, it's a deeper way. And it's it just, it almost seems like it combines or it or it, um, it just makes it a bigger, sweeter feeling. The more people catch on and the more, mm -hmm. you know, just, I don't know. It just feels like a really, oh, I'm trying to think of the word that compounds. It compounds. It's the beautifulness of, of learning that and freeing yourself from it. It really does. And, you know, if somebody doesn't want to teach a class like you're teaching, right? Like you're taking yeah. it on and you're literally setting up a class and you're teaching all these people and supporting them. Right. And yes, you're, you're the one that's being taught <laughs> in a oh, really, really oh, big way. So oh much, my gosh. But that's, that's one of the reasons why you're taking that on is so that you can learn it that big. Right. But let's yeah. say somebody doesn't want to teach a class, right. Yeah. You can still yeah. share this, share it with whoever, like when you have to form the words around the thing that you learned, it anchors it deeper within your psyche. And then the more times you share it, just share it with your children, share it with your friends, share it with your parents, share it with your whatever, whoever, right? Your spouse. And it's going to anchor it in and anchor it in and anchor it in. And then pretty soon you'll start having awarenesses and it'll get easier and easier. It's, it's, it's amazing way to teach ourselves. And it's so true. I remember my mom, um, she, at one point in my childhood, she decided to learn some better ways of being a parent. And she started taking a positive help class parenting and I can't remember who the author of the book that they went through but it was somebody like oh name some authors of of older books that was the self-help <laughs> I'm not gonna know <laughs> oh you would know it's on the tip of my tongue I... anyway no anyway she came home and she started speaking different and she started apologizing mm. and I remember thinking this is the weirdest stuff I mean, listen to the way she talks right now. It's so weird. Uh, I was very skeptical. And, <laughs> and yet she did change some things in the way that she parented. And she encouraged us kids to continually learn and grow and change. And I, I felt like that was such a mighty thing for her to do. Mm -hmm. to, to, instead of just going down the stream of, of this is how my parents did it. This is how I must. It just... I don't know what else to do. I'm just going to do yeah. it. Yeah. She went out of her way to find more education and she started changing some things. And I, that, that gives me great courage. You know, I'm changing things even more and I hope my children change things even more than that. Yeah. And their children. And that's how we stand on each other's shoulders. Yeah. yeah. I love it. You're cool. courageous, beautiful mama. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Because it takes courage to break the patterns yeah. that you've been raised with and everybody around you still doing those patterns. That takes courage to say, yeah, right. buck stops here. I'm not yeah. doing it anymore. 
Wow, I feel I feel so many people healing and I feel like this 2020 2023 was it's just a huge healing year. Do you feel I that agree. way? Do you feel I like do just... feel that. I'm watching people take on their stuff bigger yeah. than I've ever seen people take on their stuff. And, and their willingness to look at themselves is bigger than I've ever seen. Is that because we've had so many experiences that just like bring you to you know your knees yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you smacks you upside right. of the head shows you what's right. not even important anymore yes I think that's yeah. definitely part of it I also think that there's there's quite a few people who have been looking at themselves for years and years and years so I think it's also in the collective consciousness the field of collective consciousness right so it's like that hundredth monkey thing you know what I mean once it's once it's to that certain point of this many people doing it, then it spreads to the entire group. Yes. Yeah. I I just love it. So kudos to you for helping me with these. Well, the videos bless your life too, but they bless my yes. life tremendously. Yes. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you and, yeah. and all that you're doing in behalf. Like I'm getting all this way deeper, right? <laughs> and yeah. I'm getting to bless people, which blesses me. And we all just bless each other and, so yeah, so true. So happy true. to be sharing. Okay. I think that's it. That's all that wants to come up for today. Yep, I love it. Thank you so much, Marina. Oh, thank you, Janet. I sure appreciate you. And thank that's you to all our, all our watchers for, yeah. for whatever level you are showing up for yourself. Keep doing it. Keep yeah. doing it. Give yourself the, the the love and the attention and the positive, like, you, you got this, you got this. Keep giving that to yourself because you're making progress. You're making progress. And the more progress you make, the more progress you will make. <laughs> That's right. And I love, love, love that we have free education with these videos and so many things that have affected my life and helped me with my education. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched them over and over. And it's like a it's just an extra, extra thing that we can do to help ourselves heal and become who we want to become. Yep. So cool. Love Thank it. you, Marina. I love it. Thank you. And thanks for joining us today. And we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.